So about a year ago, I sat down to write my first program ever. It was a simple thing. It opened a black console window and printed out two words. I think with this description alone, a lot of programmers would immediately recognize it. After all, everyone starts off with, hello world. But the textbook I used chose to write something different. After a year of studying game development, I wanted to share what I've learned and the programs that I've made. Programs which can all trace their roots, ironically, back to those two words. During this stage in the learning process, I was drilled on the basics of C++ and made applications that displayed strings of characters rather than proper visuals or graphics. Still though, there's a lot you can do with letters, numbers, and symbols. A crucial concept that I've learned during this stage was the concept of a game loop. See, computers follow everything you write down, and only the things you write down. For most programs, it'll suffice. You ask a question, the computer goes through each line and at the end presents the output. But games are different. In games, players can input as much as they want, and the program needs to continue until that input is leave. So we add a loop. Check input, perform calculations, display output, and repeat. Input, calculate, output, repeat. It seems easy, but include different game modes, and menus, and input types, and things begin to get complicated. Of the programs created during this time, I wanted to show off a dungeon crawler, which procedurally generates the map, a slot machine, which shows a great spin animation, and battleships, which displays colors, takes input in real time, and has a rudimentary AI which plays much like a human. After getting better with C++, it was time to make proper games, with proper graphics, which meant learning game engines. During this year I have worked with two, Unreal Engine and Game Maker. In addition to graphics, these two programs allow me to create game objects, as well as game object behaviors. Of the games created during the stage, it was the first in which I learned the most from. I was so excited by the prospect of game creation that unfortunately, it went out of scope. I had bit off more than I can chew and learned the hard way that something done well had to be, well, done. In the end, I got a game with no menu, no sound, about two enemies and no particle effects. Good things took time and through this failure, I learned that firsthand. From Game Maker to Unreal Engine, my second game was much better. This time, I used imported assets, which let me focus on gameplay and polish. Sound, user interface, and particle effects were included, but the enemy types were still limited. Regardless, this was the first proper game I was proud of. Hey, real quick, I've included some links to download the programs in the video description. Download them if you want. It'll chuck a warning, so only play the executable if you absolutely trust me. While you're down there, please make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Alongside these games, I also created little programs which do not use game engines. Basic graphics were made and implemented by myself, and a lot of focus was placed on file loading like this paint tool, which can draw, save, and load files, or a platformer, which loads its levels through text files. Now it was time for the final project. A huge reason why I chose to take a course on game programming was that it provided a safe and controlled environment for collaboration. All of the previous tasks were done individually, but this time, game artists were involved. This meant that everything but the sound effects and music were to be created by students. Our final project's name was Balls to the Wall. Thank you.
Thank you so much for watching the video. I'm thinking of making games during the holidays and I've got a couple of ideas in mind, but make sure to comment if you have any suggestions. Thanks!